Hey everybody, Scott Sprinter here, DocSports.com, and welcome to the update for Monday, September 2nd, 2019. Free pick coming up in just a moment. First, a quick note. I uh, hope you were with us yesterday. We kicked off the month of September, September 1st on Sunday, with a nice 3-0 card with our premium picks up about $1,400 for $100 per unit betters. We're going to talk more about that, more about what's coming up on Monday and this week, and we're going to tell you where the big moves have been thus far in college football for week two, all on this report with the free pick coming up on Notre Dame Louisville but first a quick note if you've yet to become a member over at DocSports.com it's a real cool way to give it a trial run you click on the link below the video and you get set up for a free $60 account simple as that free $60 account you can use those on any of my daily packages at DocSports.com or any other capper on the roster again get started by clicking on the link below the video free $60 account awaits simple as that all right uh, free pick in just a bit on my Monday's college football. Yesterday, uh, we went. We, we excuse me. We went three and zero, if I can speak English. And uh, one of those wins in the WNBA. Another one in NASCAR. I want to tell you about NASCAR. Those of you who jumped on board, and quite a few of you did. A nice win uh, at Darlington. The, the race ended late. We were watching it up until just a few minutes ago, and uh, because of the weather delay, but uh, it got in the win column for us. We had Kyle Larson over Chase Elliott. Larson finished second. Chase Elliott finished nineteenth. And folks, that makes it seven straight NASCAR winners. It also means we're 14-3 and three in NASCAR going all the way back to early May and up over $5,400 for $100 per unit players. Uh, my next NASCAR race is on Sunday and I know NFL is going to take center stage and all that good stuff and we'll have NFL and we'll have college football week two over at DocSports.com on Thursday 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. But here's the thing. Don't forget about NASCAR. I will post next Sunday's race. My pick for the race uh, no later than 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific next Sunday, September 8th. And uh, you'll be able to grab my matchup, at least one, if not more, uh, for the Brickyard. I'm sure we'll be involved in at least one. And again, we'll be looking for our eighth straight NASCAR win and look to extend our run to 15-3 and three and take us up over, over $6,000 for those wagering just $100 per unit. So let's keep the streak going on Monday. Uh, real quick note about Monday. Uh, we're not involved in WNBA, unfortunately, because the league is taking the day off. I expect to be back in action Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern at DocSports.com. Major League Baseball, crappy card as far as I'm concerned. Nice win yesterday and we'd love to come right back and have a play for you on Monday, but I looked at the card two or three times. Don't like the card at all on Monday, so let's take a rear pass and get back in action on Tuesday with picks posted at 11.30 a.m. Eastern in Major League Baseball. So what do we have on Monday? Well, free pick in college football in just a moment, but over at DocSports.com, I've got the CFL. It's a day game in CFL action on Monday. There's two day games, and one of them happens to be our play for Monday, and uh, we are now on a 110-77 and 77 winning run in the CFL, so be sure to jump on board Monday afternoon, DocSports.com. The play is available right now as we speak so you can go grab it if you wish to get involved with the Canadian Football League. All right, uh, free pick again on Notre Dame Louisville in just a second. Listen, you know what we did last year in football, in the, in the NFL especially, our first full season of NFL doing these videos daily. Every Tuesday, we would have an NFL recap of what just happened the previous weekend, give you all what we thought were the pertinent notes and the important information for handicapping for the upcoming week. We're going to do that again starting next week after week one is played out Sunday and Monday. Uh, but what we're doing today on Tuesday's video, going to talk about the opening lines and the significant line moves thus far in college football. You know, the Circa Hotel in Vegas downtown, Derek Stevens, of course, the owner, well, he's heavily involved in sports betting. It's really cool. Two-story or multi-story sports book that's going to be opening up next year. Well, right now, they've decided to jump on board and be the place where you get your college football openers every Sunday, and there has been some significant movement on a handful of games. I thought it would be great to relay that information to you, and so let's get to it. We're going to put on the glasses. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, starting first with Saturday's games. Syracuse at Maryland. We saw Maryland throttle Howard. Who cares, right? Syracuse gets the win. They open a five-point road favorite at Maryland. That number down to three. Northern Illinois at Utah. You saw the Utes uh, take care of BYU, take care of business in the Holy War in their opening game. Utah's defense, the real deal. Uh, they can stop just about anybody. They're hosting Northern Illinois. Lower scoring game expected here. Utah open 20. They're up to 23. The total just 45, so they're expecting that 
Utah defense uh, to be dominant in this one again. Again, up three points. Utah, 23-point favorite at home to Northern Illinois. Tulsa's at San Jose State. I don't care that San Jose State got a, a win against a nobody over the weekend. One of the worst programs in college football. Tulsa on the road, open four. They're up to as high as seven now on the road over San Jose State. I get that move. Uh, Nebraska's at Colorado. The Huskers opened up a seven and a half point favorite. Uh, they're down to five and a half at Circa. Dropped a couple of points. They're as low as four in a couple of shops. Here's the thing about the Huskers, and I watched their game almost throughout on uh, Saturday against South Alabama. We were concerned about their defense giving up a ton of points and yardage this year. Wow, is there a concern on that offensive line? I'm going to tell you what, that center, he's a redshirt center for Nebraska. He's got a few days now to learn how to snap the ball to Adrian Martinez, who was a 10 or 12 to 1 Heisman candidate who's going to have no shot to even come close and, and be invited uh, to, for the Heisman vote because here's what happened on Saturday. If you watched him snap the ball, and I kid you not, and I'm as serious as it gets, I'll bet you half the offensive plays for Nebraska, Adrian Martinez had to leap in the air to catch the snap from center. And this throws off the timing in a Scott Frost offense that's all about timing. And not only were there bad snaps all day from a redshirt freshman at center, but the interior blocking for the inside running game was pathetic. It was horrible. They've got to work this out in practice this week or things aren't going to end well for Nebraska in Boulder. Also, uh, the season's not going to go anywhere close to as well as expected if they can't get that worked out. We'll see if they make the big change uh, between week one against South Alabama where they struggled badly against a defense that was just pathetic last year and if they're able to uh, get it on the same page, get it together for this game of Colorado. But again, Colorado getting the early money. It's come down a good uh, two to three and a half points depending on where you shot. Arkansas State UNLV. Arkansas State lost by a touchdown to SMU. Wasn't as close as that, man. If you go back and watch the replay of the Arkansas State SMU game, Arkansas State probably should have lost uh, by a, another touchdown at least. As far as UNLV is concerned, I was at the game. They were up against an outmanned Southern Utah team and uh, they rolled it up. They won 56 20 23. They could have won 70 to 7 if they wanted to. Here's the thing about Armani Rogers for UNLV. Just a very good running quarterback. He's a tall kid. He's athletic. He's quick, but he has problems with accuracy throwing the football. If Arkansas State can slow down a very good UNLV running game, they might be able to steal this one on the road. Anyway, UNLV opened up pick him at circa. They're now up to as high as two. San Diego State at UCLA. Uh, this one is circled. UCLA opened eight. They're down to six and a half. Circled because UCLA running back Kelly is questionable. San Diego State, great defense against a good FCS Weber State opponent over the weekend. They shut them out. Problem was that San Diego State offense didn't do much more than Weber State's. They kicked two field goals. They won six nothing. UCLA, we saw what their offense was all about. Inaccuracy throwing the football and a little bit discombobulated against Cincinnati in their first game. BYU at Tennessee. Boy, volunteer tier fans man i feel sorry for you georgia state comes in and whacks you on your home field tennessee opened one at home to byu tennessee now a three-point favorite western kentucky getting money on the road over fiu fiu opened 12 at circa they are down to nine uh, liberty at ul lafayette or louisiana we had louisiana on the uh, against mississippi state on saturday they covered that spread of about 20 points they lost by 10 easily covering the number lafayette getting you UL Lafayette getting the action here. They opened 10. They're up to 13. You'll remember Liberty was kind of a darling underdog for a lot of people last weekend, but uh, they're betting against Liberty so far this week off that opening number at Circa. Tulane, undervalued Tulane at Auburn. Auburn, a little bit lucky, man. Oregon gave away uh, and made some mistakes, kind of gave away that game to Auburn, made some mistakes in the red zone. The Tigers good enough to take advantage and win that game over the Ducks. Auburn opens 21 and a half against Tulane. Auburn's down to 19 and a half. A little bit of sharp money coming in there on the undervalued green wave. Nevada at Oregon. We saw Nevada get outplayed for 53 minutes out of 60 against Purdue. Purdue goes to sleep. Nevada hits a couple of big plays. Nevada upsets the Purdue Boilermakers, but Oregon has gone from 21 and a half all the way up to 24, and we'll also see if the Oregon Ducks have recovered uh, from a game that really they should have won against the Auburn Tigers.
Raiders. Buffalo at Penn State, biggest movement thus far. Penn State opens 22 at home to the Buffalo Bulls. They're all the way up to 27 and a half. Eastern Michigan at Kentucky. Kentucky opens 16. They are down to 14 and a half. Eastern Michigan played a lot of close games last year. And by the way, they beat Coastal Carolina 30-23 on Saturday. Coastal threw four interceptions and finished with a minus three turnover ratio, yet still came within seven of Eastern Michigan. Kentucky, meanwhile, eked out the cover in that win over Toledo. Again, early action so far coming in on Eastern Michigan. California escapes UC Davis. We told you, man, we had the under as far as our future with California. When we did our reports about a month ago, we said UC Davis wouldn't even be a gimme, and they weren't. Uh, Washington opened 11 and a half over Cal. They're up to 13. Final game on the FBS board on a Saturday night, Oregon State at Hawaii. Hawaii's gone from two and a half up to five. And uh, listen, last time we saw Hawaii, they were a home underdog to a Pac-12 team, knocked off Arizona outright. And we told you they're now, what, six and zero or seven and zero against the spread last seven times as a home underdog to a Pac-12 team. Now they're laying points. They've gone from two and a half up to five over Oregon State. So there's the significant movement that happened all throughout the day and into Sunday night uh, with those opening lines coming from the circa and then how people bet them throughout the day. And we'll do this every week for you. Uh, we'll find those games where there's been you know, sharp money movement and significant line moves on opening day each week of the college football numbers coming out on Sunday afternoons. I hope you uh, enjoy those and I hope you'll be able to use that information uh, to better handicap the slate. All right, so let's get to our free pick in just a moment. Real quick note, passing in baseball with our premium picks on Monday. No WNBA. The league's got the day off on Monday. We'll be back on Tuesday. We have CFL, a premium pick of the CFL as we look to run our winning run in the Canadian Football League to 111 and 77. And don't forget, both CFL games go during the day on Monday, including our play. We have one play aside on Monday afternoon's card. Let's get to the free pick. It's Notre Dame and Louisville with Notre Dame land about 18, 18 and a half as we speak total 55 listen here's the thing about louisville the one thing we know they're not going to give up last year they started out the season what was it two and two something like that they had the close loss where they blow a lead in the fourth quarter uh, get shut out in the fourth quarter lose to florida state 28 to 24 a game they could have won and so they start like two and two something like that two and three then they lose. I mean, they gave up after that. They lose seven straight games. And it was the way they lost them that was notable. Uh, they gave up 38 points or more in all seven of those losses. They gave up 52 points or more in six of those seven losses. They gave up 66 points in one game. 77 points they gave up to Clemson. They gave up on Petrino and his staff. Petrino's gone. Scott Satterfield's not going to take any crap. I'll tell you that right now. You'll know him from his Appalachian State days. So I don't care if this team even gets down early. They're not going to give up. Satterfield won't let that happen. As far as Notre Dame, I think they're just a tiny bit overvalued. Uh, so I think it's a situation where grabbing the points of Louisville isn't a bad idea in this particular game. Uh, Notre Dame's got you know, a couple of the guys that they need to uh, bring in and give new looks to as far as the interior defense is concerned. And again, I like Ian Book. Good, solid quarterback for the Irish. But I don't believe they're going to win this game by enough to cover this point spread. I do think Louisville is going to play hard, win or lose this entire game, and I do believe they're going to hang the numbers. So we're going to uh, recommend an opinion, free pick today on Monday on Louisville, plus the points over Notre Dame. Real quick thought on that Oklahoma game against Houston. Um, for, uh, the Oklahoma wins 49-31. Uh, Houston covers the spread. They did get over that team total. We didn't play the game. We didn't play anything in the game. I don't think we learned a lot about that Oklahoma defense because the Houston offense has to get used to Dana Holgerson and his offensive staff and calls and all that kind of good stuff. And they really were kind of getting out of sorts, trying to find a rhythm for about a quarter and a half to start that game. But over the final two and a half quarters, they put up 31 points. They drove the ball well. And I saw some leaks again in that Oklahoma pass defense. Here's the thing about the Oklahoma uh, starting, or I shouldn't say starting, but the Oklahoma offense. Besides the game against Houston, they've got four more games before the rivalry game with Texas. Four more games against Basically, teams without a legit stop unit. Oklahoma's going to be able to pile up points of plenty. If they don't do something stupid against UCLA, they're going to be undefeated. They're going to have a ton of points, ton of yardage. Jalen Hurts might even be the, the, the talk along with Trevor Lawrence as far as the man for the Heisman Trophy. We saw what he did against a bad Houston defense on Sunday. 
So you go into Texas, their sixth game of the year, and guess what? We could have an overhyped Oklahoma team that doesn't have a great pass defense that has just fattened up and gotten big and juicy against a bunch of, well, illegitimate stop units. Let's pay attention to that. I love to look down the road for certain weeks and certain matchups for some of these teams and see where we might find some value. And if Texas would happen to lose this week in Austin to LSU, that could even give us more value when Texas uh, takes on Oklahoma a few weeks from now. And here's the thing about that uh, game real quickly. LSU opened and remains about a four, four and a half point favorite at Texas for this weekend. And we'll talk a little bit more about that game as we get closer to Saturday. That's gonna do it for us. Free pick again is Louisville plus the points. I hope you like these videos. If you do, click on that like button. Be sure to subscribe. We do appreciate those who have done so thus far. I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com. Let's put Monday in the win column. We're right back here Tuesday, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific.